right. Yo, I still don't. This this would be random, like because we were already talking in the midst, and that's cool too to like start recording once we like in the midst of conversation. Yeah, because we already be flowing. Yeah. Um. But and I and I like that style better. But um, I don't have a name for this shit. I was thinking some <laughs> corny shit like Q and A, but I don't want to do that because. <laughs> That nah, I was. I, I, yeah, I can't. I think that's kind of misleading. Q and A. No one's asking questions. What's going on over there? I um, mean, I guess we got a Q and A segment. That would be kind of cool. That, that would be cool. Be that would be cool. We answer questions at the end and shit. But yeah. eventually, we going to uh, get to a point where we uh, name whatever we're doing. Um, but yo, I'm a day. Word. Um, I, I think I'm gonna go by Aqua on this because I usually go by Quincy. A lot of people call me a lot of different. Ah, you gotta change your name and what's the name? Oh, all right, all right, boom. <laughs> nah, so it got my name. I, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm gonna just all go right. by. I'm gonna go by my government on this on the pod. Oh, you going by the government? I'm gonna go by the government on the pod. Bro, I knew you all these years. You hate Quad here. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I know. All right. about that. So I guess the intro to this is that um, just being a fan of music, um, I just want to talk about this shit more often, and I want to continue to, you know, build on the stuff that I'm into outside of um, just introducing new shit. Uh, I don't know, are we cursing or not? Because I already let some, or are we flowing? I mean, I don't, I don't think I could honestly talk about music without cursing. All right, all right, cool. Nah, I mean. We'll we'll see we'll see how everything goes. <laughs> I mean, creatively, I don't really curse that much in my conversation, but now nah, I feel like music com it's certain conversations where the curses just flow out like yeah for sure it ain't even about like oh like I'm intentionally cursing but yeah yeah exactly yeah. like yo this crazy and things like <laughs> yo put your phone on do not disturb it's my notifications hold on it's not even it's my it's my laptop that's really the problem. That's just shorty texting or nah. It's a group chat. I don't even know how to handle that. I just how to mute my notifications. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but anyway, just to introduce what we're doing here. Uh, basically, we're going to just be reviewing music, talking about music, uh, rap, hip, pop, whatever. You know, whatever we listen to individually and whatever is requested too. Um, yeah, I got this idea randomly. I was listening to a couple new albums, I'm like, yo, I just want to talk about this shit. Like, I want to create a space where I can just talk about music and, you know, you know, quad fucking jump right on it. And Yeah, it, man, I, that's actually a great way to get into it. So, I seen he was uh, talking about this idea and having a uh, podcast or creating content overall like this is something that I've been wanting to do for a minute. So, when I seen that, my boy, they was talking about it, I'm like, bruh, a better way man we got so much other shit that we can talk about up here that's like <laughs> that would tie in all the music and all that but we can get to that but right so, nah and, and you know like i had to think on the shit you know i'm i'm very personal when it comes to like creating and shit whereas like i do all i do everything by myself so even like just throwing the idea out like yo i gotta get used to maybe you know, working with other people or just trying to find that right mesh of chemistry and shit like that. So I jumped on it and I'm just like, yo, this is everything that I've been asking for, you know, like, so why not just, you know, test it out? If it don't work, then it don't work, you know, but like, why not give it a shot at least? Like, why, why, why do everything by yourself when you don't necessarily have to, uh, when you can grow with the people around you, you know? For sure. <laughs> All right, so I guess uh, this first one, we decided to do a throwback album. Uh, you want to introduce the album? Um, I, like I said, man, I think the introduction, we should always give kudos, give the props for it to do. So without yeah. further ado, the first album that we're going to review on this is a uh, platinum album with no features. <laughs> <laughs> 2014 for a seven drive by J. Cole. Yo. J. Cole, I just got to say this. J. Cole is my favorite artist. That's my number one guy. Like, out of all the rappers, like, uh, Kendrick's up there, Wale's up there, fucking Big Sean is up there sometimes, but J. Cole is my number one. Like, and it's all, like, rap, music in general is subjective. 
You named them. Uh, the, that's who I got up there in the top five of rap. I mean, I'm pretty much. I'm pretty sure that's a consensus. And so uh, Drake, Kendrick, oh, I forgot about Drake. Cole. Drake, Kendrick, Cole, Sean, Wale. Day. That's the five right now. Pretty sure that's the five. As far as rap ability goes, because I like. I mean, obviously, the way that they rap. I feel like Big I, Sean just got on. To be honest, like so? for me, I, I got a sleeper for my fifth sometimes depending on how big sean is rapping on certain beats but big crit um that's one of my favorite rappers big and he don't get enough recognition like that big nigga's nice that's also very true there's a lot of rappers that don't get enough recognition but i think that's where regions come in uh, it's kind yeah, of that's true that's true but um 2014 four so dry bro i don't even know where to begin bro that man what a time <laughs> go back to that. Oh, legit. What, am I what happened for you in 2014? Because I could tell the world what happened to both of us, bro. <laughs> 2014 was, yo, know, just just thinking about the shit. We was talking about it before, but just where we were, like, and I think it leaked too when we first heard it. Yeah. I think we waited a couple days. I don't. I think it was like December 9th or something like that. I, I think I remember it leaking, and I, I think I remember telling y'all, like, nah, I don't want to hear it until it yeah, comes yeah, on. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> everybody in the door was like, nah, we're going to wait, you know. <laughs> Still when it came out, somebody somehow knew the lyrics. I don't know how that got mixed up, but. Mind you, this is before fucking, um, this is before streaming and shit. This is like, like, yo. Yeah, this is a crazy it. time, bro. To the, And. I remember everybody just in the fucking common area. Me and Kwa went to um, Fairleigh Dickerson together uh, for a semester. And I just remember all of us sitting in the um, common area, just vibing, bro. This was that type of album, bro. This was, for me, this was a college-ass album. And being in college... Yeah, bro. For sure. Yo, yo, I feel like that made it even better. And obviously it's grown on me. Um, But just like that aspect of it, I just love the most. Like, yo, I just remember that so vividly. I don't have any like album memories. Like, I was doing this and that, but 2014 Forest Hills Drive, I can go b- right back to the first time we all listened to it in the fucking common area. Yeah, man. Always lit, bro. That was like, <laughs> always lit, man. And like I said, J. Cole is my man. I've been, I was listening to him. I want to say I started in like 2010-ish, 2011, uh, and I had to catch up to some of his stuff. I had to catch up to Friday Night Lights. I had to catch up to the warm-up and shit like that. Yeah, me too. I had to catch up on J. Cole. So I had a friend in high school. She was uh, She's actually a Bangladesh background, so her family was kind of strict. Mm-hmm. I remember she wanted me to go to the record store and get her the sideline story, right, the album, and I'm like, damn. She never asked me to get no other album, but she asked me to get this album. So when I went, I got one for me too. I'm like, I got to hear this. Wow. So when I heard it, I'm like, yo, this is fire. That's how I got introduced to J. Cole. I started going back and listening to a lot of the music on YouTube. And Yo, listening to music on YouTube was a thing, bro. Yeah. I that mean, people thing. still do it. People do it on, they go they go crazy on their Xboxes now on YouTube playing the young <laughs> boy. Ain't no different, bro. Ain't nothing changed in the rap game. We just got different technology now. Right. Bro. But it was that piff too. That yeah. Piff was really oh man, the fucking music at the time too. Mixtape general, that. Yeah. Piff. And it's like a whole build up, like from like that piff to where we are with streaming now. Like shit yeah. is crazy, bro. Shit is crazy. And J Cole, like, oh my gosh. Actually, sideline story actually grew on me over the years. That grew on me the most. Yeah, um, I, I was like receptive to that immediately. But that got some gems on it too. For sure. And I remember. Before, I think maybe the year before, or like that summer, J. Cole had the Dollar in the Dream tour. Yeah, yo, I remember that too. Live, bro. It was it was before it dropped. It was before it dropped. I want to say like 2013 or something like that, because the album dropped in 2014. Yeah. End of the year. I think it was like right, right. No, I think it was right after it dropped, bro. It might have been right after the album drop. He did the Dollar in the Dream tour. Because well, well, I remember no, his main Dollar. I think he drop. did one after, and like right. after 2014, right, right. he was like a superstar. Like you, yeah, can't, yeah, yeah. you can't just uh, have. Like, you can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't sell these tickets for like, 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 You gotta go. To you the need road. to recoup. 
she got to go to the stadiums and Running stuff. up to the billions. But the one, but the one a year prior, that's where like his whole momentum, like I was waiting for this album to drop and shit like that. Like I think up to that, that was a surprise album. Beyonce had did it first, and then he came out like two weeks, two three weeks. Like yo, I'm dropping an album. And then they go, oh, J Cole dropping an album. Like yo, that time was crazy, bro. Oh, uh, which album you talking about? Before uh, 24 Dawn? No, oh, 20 leading up to 2014. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, his momentum during that time was crazy. I remember me at that time. I was listening to a lot of Kendrick. So uh, I think Good Kid, Mad City came out. Yeah, maybe we got to talk about that too. We'll break down that shit too. Like, yeah. So around that time, that's what I was listening to. Um. But yeah, like you said, man, I remember when this album came out and we all we all really took this album in together for the first Word. time. That's what made it even dope. That's why it's a memory, bro. Oh, like man. experience an album with people, like right. a group of people, like that's yeah. like like if you got like friends into music and everybody they have like a listening party, like it just feel different. Like the songs just hit different. Like just all just overall, what's your overall I guess thoughts on the album from top to bottom before you even break down anything else so i don't think there's a damn thing that i can say wrong about this album (laughs) (laughs) um if if somebody has never heard code before this is definitely the first thing i'm putting them on every song top to bottom he rapped his ass off that's pretty much number one to me um i like Bro, at first you gotta be able to spit, bro. I mean, I, from everything from the essence, your rhythm, your flow, the way you put them, these words together, the way you paint the picture, his similes, everything was great. So like, even the production, like his beats was crazy. And I feel like, I feel like this is the album, and he he's continuously did this, like from that point going forward, like he just grew, grew with his like lyricism skills, his storytelling skills, his production. Because up to that point, you know, um, a lot of people were saying, like, his beats and stuff was boring. Like, being a die-hard J. Cole fan, obviously, I beg to differ. But he always carried that stigma of being, like, boring and shit like that. I, I hate that stigma, man. Kendrick got that stigma all over him forever. But like, he's great. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, he's too woke and shit like that. Like, bro. Yeah, like, we ain't trying to. Uh, he, he was too woke for a lot of years. Now, everybody want to go back in here untitled, unmastered. But... <laughs> we can talk about that another day too, cause man, what album? <laughs> you said what? I said, but now everybody want to talk about Untitled Unmastered and everything that was on that, and oh, to kill a uh, to pump a butterfly. Where I I I I really gotta like super duper dive into. It. I ain't saying I slept on those albums, but I didn't appreciate them in the prime, and that has nothing to do with like Kendrick or that's just like where I was where my ears was at the time. You know, you know what's crazy? Uh is I know it does sound like cliche to say that that album was ahead of its time. But literally if Temp to Pimp a Butterfly came out today, that shit would win the Nobel yeah, Peace think, Prize. Like but even even Dan, even Dan. That too I mean yo bro full tangent here. But it'll it'll come back. But <laughs> this is what happens when you talk about like the goats of like yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> we got like, back to cool. But even Dan was ahead of his time, and that was a little bit more soft on the edges if you compare it to, to Pimp a Butterfly. Because content-wise, he was basically saying the same stuff. Just, like, I guess, like, he took the criticisms from, like, all right. like I can't give it to y'all like this, but let's see if y'all take it, like. And even like still, the, people was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like. Uh, masterpiece, bro. Dan was a masterpiece. Yeah, like uh, XXX with you two. That shit is crazy, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that another time, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but overall, I feel like uh, 2014 is like, you don't get perfect albums often. Like, I feel like top to bottom, like, the way it was scripted, the way it was woven in, it really, as you listen to each song, each song is connected to the one before and the one after. So it's like that whole story that you go through from uh, the intro. And J. Cole got some of the sickest intros, the chillest intros that 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 we've heard. Like his intros never flop. Mixtape days and album days. Like it'll always get you like, all right, 
like, yo, I'm about to get into this album. Like, it always prep you for whatever direction he decides to take you on. Um, but 2014, from top bottom, you just hear the story and you just ride with it. You connect with it. Even if you don't necessarily, like, live that lifestyle as, as far as, like, towards the middle of the album, like the Hollywood lifestyle. But once you chase certain goals, you get into it and you just be like, Nah, this this ain't really for me. This ain't really what I thought it um really really what I thought it would be, and like that's what that's what makes it so relatable because you don't have to necessarily go to like the Hollywoods of the world. It's like people who struggle with working nine to fives. Like that's your Hollywood. Like it's like thinking you want this job, but it's not really for you. Like everything that you thought you wanted to do. Like, yeah. Nah, that that ain't important. Yeah, for sure. I mean. That's, that's a great way to look at it. And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand about the message that J. Cole was trying to give. It's like, I guess people receive it and they think, yeah, you know, it's easy to say having money and everything when you got money. You feel me? Or, but it's like, at the same time, he was giving us a lot. Like, he, he that's a lot, man. He, he said it himself, like, Having people know him more than he know himself is like that's crazy to him. So like, <laughs> imagine that though. It's people that you don't even know exist, and they know more about you than you even. That's like, yo, look, that's crazy. Right. Or at least they think they know more about you than you do. And yeah, and even when they when they don't know or they know something that's not true, it doesn't matter. Right. Because the already- out there is, is just out there. Yeah. And and that's w- one thing that he does really well. He can he can rap about something and make it sound like completely about himself, but at the same time, when you listen to it, it has oh, absolutely really? nothing to do with him. Like, and that shit is fucking crazy. Even some of the stuff that he do nowadays that he put out, um, with what is that song? The recent controversy between him and um, old girl, no name. Yeah, even that song. I don't feel like it was really about her. Like, if you actually break it down, that's yeah. how it goes, man. And I, I I don't know if we'll get into like song breakdowns and shit like that. Maybe maybe we will. Awesome man. Yeah. But yeah, top to bottom man, this album. Share my screen real quick, I mean, so we can go through the track list. Wow. So you want to go track by track? So I I just wanted to do a overall rundown of the entire album. Right. So we got of course the intro, then January twenty eighth. I know. <laughs> One of Yo, my that favorite. beat is so smooth, bro. Pretty That's much. Go ahead. Man, as soon as you get into the album, it's like intro, two, three, four, fire, 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 off the bat, you know? Bro. That, that's kind of crazy. I think it's kind of crazy that he let off with the singles, like Wet Dreams. He let off with that. like bro, Wet Dreams, like, yo, I remember that shit, yo. <laughs> it's crazy. I definitely want to do older albums, too, because it just make you so fucking nostalgic and shit like that. Wet Dreams, every dude connected to that story, bro. Whether you did it that way or not, like, you were your first time like yeah it was yeah it was, i definitely like, capped about like my skill level at the time like nobody wants to no guy wanted to admit he was a virgin bro and the crazy part is we, we was probably all too young to be having sex anyway like that's yeah. a whole different conversation but you read about that my brother <laughs> yo that's the crazy part but what I think is crazy I'm starting to notice that on social media <laughs> O three adolescence is my favorite song on the album. Uh, I think so. I think mine too. I think it was like the most relatable to me, if that makes sense. Like, I've been there. I've been literally in that same position, like being at the homie's crib and him having that life. And it's just like, yo, you think you want this shit, but nah, you don't, nigga. Like, like, like we said, bro, we was in college when this came out. So like, it's like, yo, and that's the crazy part. Like listening to it over the years like and knowing guys who like about that life and in that direction like like one day one of my um one of my brother friends i had seen him on the bus or whatever and he's like yo bro i'll be watching you you doing your thing and it's like the same feeling like you 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 know you get doubtful and shit like that you like man let me just make a quick buck this way but it's really niggas out here watching you and inspired yeah, by you and just like yo you, you got to keep going if you don't go like that's putting more pressure on me to do what I got. Like I don't want to be doing this. Like you, you the way out. For sure. Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy, man. Like 
knowing people that that's on the other side or like I mean I don't even want to say it's the other side because we in it like I see it every day like I live in it so right. understanding I think I mean that's that's what music is bro the way like I said the way he wrote that track and even if that's not even how it happened for him which I'm pretty sure is how it is but that may not be how it happened for you but that still might be relatable to you because like I said we live in it we know people that that deal with that type of stuff like, and that'll talk to you just like that and and then and and the fact that it matters is it's like yo I work for me I remember working a nine to five it's like I hate that shit <laughs> I make <laughs> a nigga, I'm gonna make like four hundred, maybe eight uh four hundred a week, make eight hundred on a two week check, you feel me? Yeah. And my men's that made eight hundred yesterday. Word. Way more than eight hundred yesterday. You feel me? It's like, yo, damn, <laughs> maybe I should just do that. But like yo, I'm man, not doing man, <laughs> but your man's that's doing that to tell you, nah, bro, like uh, Eight hundred. Not worth it. And that and that and that. And yeah, that. I gotta. Yeah, you feel me? I gotta do this. It's not even mine. I gotta take it back and get this. And this is like, yo, it's not even worth all of this. Like your eight hundred is legit. It's guaranteed. Bro. <laughs> Wait. And then I got it. I can't. I can't get nothing. I gotta explain where it came from. It's like that's the crazy part. That's that's that song just hit so crazy, bro. It's yeah. crazy, especially like during that time. Sp- time period for myself like it's just like a lot of like downtime and you just like down on yourself like yo i gotta i gotta get to something i gotta figure out something bro like, you know remind the audience one more time we were freshmen in college bro shit was <laughs> it, it, it was starting to become a different time for us he like j cole definitely like one thing about him like when I was in high school, I felt like he was rapping to me. When I was in college, I felt like he was every like as he grew. Like yeah, he grew with him, man. Too. Like damn, bro, like this shit hitting too hard. Yeah, know? nah, I remember like <laughs> <laughs> I remember like listening to in the morning and just being like, yo, damn, this is everything I tell a girl. Like every single last one of these words, son. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Oh three adolescence is definitely my favorite. Then after that is um, A Tale of Two Cities, another ill beat. Yo, when him and Kendrick did that little swap swap beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Friday. (laughs) Kendrick rapped to um, A Tale of Two Cities, and that was shit. As A Tale of Two Cities, is that uh, last night we pulled up at the nigga at the light, like. (laughs) Run it. (laughs) Yeah, that's crazy. That shit. That's a, that's that's a car song. That's a car yeah. song. I play that in my car on some chill shit. I still play that shit. And then, um, yeah, Tell the Two Cities, crazy. I like that beat. That instrumental is crazy. You can t- you can tell like throughout this whole project, he grew. The production level on this album is crazy. You gotta think about it. Uh, G- uh, get off my deck. Oh my gosh, that was the one. Because you don't hear fucking Cole on a beat like that. Like up to that point, you ain't hearing Cole on that boom bat boom bat beat, bro. And Cole, Cole still, Cole still will tell you like, yeah, yeah, this is what y'all want to hear, but this ain't really what I'm trying to make right now. Like, I like, want y'all this. <laughs> the crazy part is like over the years after this point, when he got on those beats, he fucking demolished them, bro. Yeah, like he lot. left no questions on the table. And you know, as a Cole fan, it'd be annoying because you know the nigga can rap, but. For people like you, just gotta prove it to them all the time. Like, like nah, like Cole be snapping, like he really be going in and shit. And get off my dick was, it wasn't like he was rapping, rapping, but he was showing like, yo, I can get on one of these beats too, and make these little, you know, at that time, like every fuck every song on the radio sounded like that. Yeah, you know, crazy uh, hearing you speak like as a Cole fan. Because, I, I mean, I like J. Cole, but, like, when I say I'm a Cole fan, like, I know what you mean when you say you're a Cole fan, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? But, like, I guess the polarity of J. Cole's music is probably just as much as the polarity of, I would say, Kendrick or Future's music. Because if I'm going to say anything, I, I would say I'm, I'm a Future fan or a Kendrick fan. So I get where you're coming from saying that people – because, like, you're right. People, like, all year people would be like, man, y'all listen to J. Cole? <laughs> All types of crying faces and right. jokes and jokes. But when the J. Cole album drop, everybody on Twitter, like, oh, I'm about to listen to this J. Cole. Everybody on Twitter. Like, oh, so I don't get it. Like, do y'all like him or not? Yeah, 
being a fan is so hard. And I'm not like the type, I don't talk about other rappers um, throughout the year, no matter who it is. Um, I'll check in for different albums that I think may be worth to listen to. But they just be going too hard. Like, the, if it was up to Twitter, J. Cole is the most boring, trashest rapper ever. And like, yeah. being a fan, like, and you seeing your man's just getting fucking, his name is getting spat on it like every day. That shit start to get to you. So when he do drop some shit, you just want to put that shit in their face. Like, yo, what was that shit you were saying, my G? Like, what's up? Like, I, I get the same. I, like I said, it's the same way about Kendrick, bro. Like when J. Cole had that feature run, I think from 2017 to 2018, where he was just murdering every feature that he was on. It's like, bro, like I already knew he was capable of doing it. But it was just like, oh my gosh, like J. Cole is there. Now they put him at the top. I don't really have a top like because it's a matter of preference like yeah i can like one a one b kendrick and j cole but it really comes down to like like your ear and what you like like about a certain artist and bro i'm i'm not going i mean i keep it a buck with you the person that's at the top of the rap game right now is obviously drake but it's because kendrick apparently don't care and the same thing for cole bro they just like they don't care about us. They drop music when they want to, bro. <laughs> I, th- I hate that we have to give it to Drake by default because, like, I feel like he's so inconsistent. Like, Makes for sense. me, for me, he's, like, obviously, like, he's going to always get the numbers. Drake, like, the numbers with Drake are always going to be there. Like, he's just that big at this point. But for me, Drake can wrap his ass off. And now we got to, now we got to have, like, a fucking Drake breakdown, too. Like and I I love when Drake absolutely raps because I feel like outside of like the questionable times where he like had a ghostwriter and shit like that I think Drake could really like write and rap but I feel like he be trying to do a little bit of everything too much and it comes off as like wave hopping what happened wave hopping yeah like he's always like whatever is hot he's on it like when Twenty One come up. He's on it. When I think he did a song with Bad Baby, did the UK shit, did the fucking Jamaican Drake. Like Drake, where's where's your lane? Where's I've your had, lane? I've had all these sentiments about Drake, but at the same time, I could appreciate the way. Like I said, a life life is really about preferences. The same way you saying that, you feel me? He could uh, he just trying to hop on whatever wave. He could say, yo, I'm just trying to bring attention to this wave because I'm Drake. No, I agree. So, and he it, it, it works. It, it works both ways, too, because he, he does put, he put, he put that Block Boy JB wave on. Like, Tay Keith is a platinum producer now because of that <laughs> shit, bro. And my, am I lying? Nah, you're not. I, I, and I fuck with Drake. Don't get it wrong. Like, that's my guy. That's my guy. Like, yeah. I, I get in my Drake bag every now and again because, like, he up there when it comes to lyrics and shit. But, yeah. Like, it's certain versions of him I feel like the world can do without. Like that UK Drake shit. <laughs> nah, fam. Nah. <laughs> yeah, man got them and let's go with them. Like, yo, I only, like, I tell people all the time, I only have my, I only have two favorite versions of Drake Jamaican Drake and fucking rapping Drake. Like, the oh, type of like controller Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And fucking, uh, even one dance. And that's not like Caribbean Drake, but that's still like right there, too. That's a vibe. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, I like. I mean, rapping Drake, of course. I like. I like this track, Drake. I like. This this track. Yeah, I, even when he sneaked this, and like, even on the <laughs> language when he was dissing my boy Kendrick, he ain't really want that smoke. <laughs> to be honest, he was ducking. It's all good though. But like, we we heard it. We all heard it. <laughs> like I, I just really niggas that's talking that shit. Just, just, like, just be direct. If I'm a dissing nigga, like, fucking nonsense. Fuck Jay. J- Fuck Jay Z. Like, yo, I need my, I, I need the diss record to come like that. Nowadays, everybody just be like, you know, being cute about it. Like, nah, yeah, nah, they need to bring. That's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. <laughs> they need to bring that shit back. Bring that energy back. That shit was fire, bro. <laughs> Off that tangent, back to the album. Like, um, I think after two, Taylor Two Cities was Fire Squad. History repeats itself, and that's just how it goes. That's all. Yeah, man. That's the that shit. Why you acting like, oh, that, this is what I'm saying. The flow's on every track, bro. Now that I'm a rap, you either way. Like, that's crazy. The verses, 
the verse is crazy. Like <laughs> no, he oh, even that he had the little the little interlude on the Who's the King? That's what song that is, right? Who's the King? Yeah. What song? That's t- that's Taylor Two Cities. Is that Taylor Two Cities? Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. That's the that nah. That's Fire Squad. Wait, let me see. Tell me you still love me, and so to let me go. Will I return or will I burn? Never know. Who's the king? <laughs> <laughs> it don't even matter. That's a, that's the thing too. He changed that whole conversation too, about like, like yo, we all kind of run this shit together. Like we ain't gotta necessarily compete because the niggas at the top don't really have to compete. It be the little mid tier rappers, low tier rappers who trying to scrap their way to the top, but. Like, honestly, like, unless they dissing each other as far as Drake, J. Cole, even even Wale, but Wale got some smoke from Cole one time, too. Um, Big Sean, if they not dissing each other, then, like, and I, even when they do be dissing each other, it'd be petty as hell, bro. I low-key, they're not to interject or, like, change the subject, but I feel like when we mention these names, it's kind of disrespectful not to mention Meek Mill. I feel like he should be mentioned. Oh, Cause I, like, of course, we're not talking about like Jay, because uh, Jay, Jay is a name that doesn't have to be mentioned. Wayne. Yeah, yeah, obviously, the names that like we're not even talking you know, about yeah, alive. We're, we're talking about this talking generation about right now. Like, no, yeah. no, no. I think the the reason why Meek don't get brought up is because if you're talking top five, he's like he yeah, falls he like, into that six <laughs> seven spot. <laughs> he's a six man. That's really what it is. Like, but he's nice. Yeah, like, it's niche though. It's kind of he got it. He kind of got a niche audience. But the way, like I said, bro, at the end of the day, that man can rap. No, he, he can rap. rap. He actually, he <laughs> actually beat Drake in the fucking in they little in they battle. He he beat Drake. That man Drake just rap. had the pop song. Drake had the song like yo. He had a diss track in which he didn't curse. Yeah, like you know, imagine that, that on the radio. <laughs> in a battle to a dude who don't even curse in the disc, right? Damn body like, by singing. No, you got a fucking Ghost Rider, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And this man don't even curse. He just questioned, like, is that a girl's, is that your girl's tour? Is that tour? a world tour or your girl's tour? Like, oh, come Yo, on. Oh, that's crazy. But Meek do get a lot of respect. Like, because he's like super duper niche because he's like super duper street. Yeah. Like, sure. he makes music just for the streets. Whereas like Drake, Cole, like right. they give you that, they give you something else in addition to that. They can go that route, like more so Kendrick than J. Cole, because like California culture is different way from, deeper from into Cole. like gang shit and that. So yeah. I feel like talking about that type of shit, uh Kendrick do have that up on J. Cole as far as connecting to the streets and shit. But they all can go there. But me, he tends to stay there, like and like that's just him. Like, uh, I wouldn't say that because, like, I think I like over his not, recent albums, he's showing, like, but that's you know, recent. This is a masterpiece, but th- those are his recent albums. He got out of that fucking, like, you know, that bag that he was in. He was in that yeah, fucking yeah, intro yeah. bag. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It, bro, you wasn't getting Meek out of, like, his role. His dream but chases. Now we, now we get in, like, all right, I got a story to tell. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure. that shit resonates. Like, nah, his last right. two albums, like, you can hear the growth in his voice. We getting fucking conscious Meek. And I like that shit. I like him in that bag. I like him in the bag of, like, I, like... Telling the story of the shit that happened to the niggas that we know in the hood every day, bro. Like, like, yo, they could do that to him, then imagine the people that don't know nobody, bro. They ain't bro, got like, no yo, know. I was just locked up with a bunch of niggas who wasn't Meek Mill. Yeah, and bro. Because I'm Meek Mill, I got out. Like, yeah, for sure. Like that bag that he got in, I forget. And it's like not even because I'm Meek Mills, bro. Because I got Meek Mill money, I got out. Like, Word. And and Jay Z know me, and the fucking and Michael Rubin and Robert Kraft. You yeah, feel me? Like, maybe it's the Michael Rubens or the Robert Krafts or the billionaires from Marcy and the way they got my back. <laughs> he be wild, man. Definitely, he's definitely gonna get a bunch of love on this shit, bro. Like, yeah, fuck with me. He 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 from the streets and he for the streets, and in, in hip hop conversations. We definitely can't, we definitely can't leave like the streets. Yeah, for sure, for sure, or the streets, for sure, as mm-hmm. a whole. Like, but he is the six man, he is the six man. <laughs> so, oh yeah, so after uh, Fire Squad, we got Central Pay. I think this is where he starts to go. He gives you, he gives you a different vibe on this song. Word, and I, and I appreciate it. I appreciate that vibe 
of switching it up because it's like, all right, like I'm this kid that that was staring at Hollywood and shit, and now I'm here in in this part of the album. You can hear like the dreaminess of it. Oh my bad. You can hear like the dreaminess of like him, like yo, I'm here in the lights, camera, action, and all of that, and like you get sucked into that that aspect of the album. Like I think it's that song and a couple other hello. Yeah, Shoot, yeah, I think yeah. Hello was after that. Yeah, the production, man. Like, I'm sitting here just thinking about, like, I'm hearing the song in my head, and it's still giving me the feeling that I know he was trying to give listeners when they well, hear the song. Like, from, from saying troops, you know, like, all right, I'm here, and then you get into fucking get off my dick and no role models, where it's like, all right, like, I'm that arrogant motherfucker. Like, I'm a rapper, rapper, bro. I'm a rapper. Like, what is you talking about? And, like, you can see that like you can actually like see in his career where he was at just by the way he was dressing, bro. No yeah. room out of might be a slept on that. That might be the best song in this album. No. I'm gonna say that. First thing first, <laughs> rest in peace, Uncle Phil. Bro. Yo, that shit hit. You the only father that I ever knew. I get my bitch pregnant, I'm gonna be a better you. Oh, oh my god, bro. Yo. Yeah. That might be I the best that. song in this album, bro. I ain't, I'm not gonna lie. Yo. <laughs> Yeah, I have to talk about on that song, bro. You know. you, you mean, I love when they come back for the third verse. It's like, the fourth song. <laughs> there's an old saying in Tennessee. I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee. <laughs> no, I, I love that. I love that. Oh, uh, I love that. Uh, that little sound bite, the George Bush sound bite. Yeah. Fool me one time. You fool me, yeah. <laughs> yo, he fucked that all the way up, yo. Yeah. That was like perfect, yo. And that song, oh man, that song hit. Just, <laughs> yo, the first line, bro. The first line, bro. Like, like you, it, he just smack you right there, bro. Yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of the best way to open the track. Yo, because you know, <laughs> yo, people connect to that. Everybody. Like, a lot of a lot of people grew up watching like these TV dads, um, and that really helped them, bro. Like, yeah. listen, like seeing fucking Will Smith, who in the in, in the show at the time, like his dad was leaving him and shit, like, and Phil was just there. Yeah. Like seeing like the Carl Winslow's, like even though we can't say his name, but the Bill Cosby's and shit, like oh, even uh, n- not even to like the shows that they just put on Netflix. Like I've been watching a lot of movies. So you got the Frank Mitchells. You got like uh, I've been watching Sister Sister. You got uh, what's his name? Ah, uh, Campbell. <laughs> Campbell, yeah, Ray Campbell. Yeah, like all those TV dads. Is, that's kind of like and being black, like we underappreciated that representation. Because you don't see black fathers anymore. Like it's it's so crazy, man. That I, like the fact that they brought these shows back and I watched it and I'm just like, yo, it's I didn't even understand as a child that this is what they they were presented to us. But now I like seeing the world and the shows that they got now and the stuff that we see now, it's like, yo, it was whole like pure like shout out to Brandy because her show was purely for us. Everybody right. on the show was black. No. And he didn't have no white extras. Like it's it's really crazy when you think about it because the dudes in the nineties, like who was actually like watching these shows a little bit better than us, like they fathers wasn't there because of like crack and shit like that. Like yeah. so they really idolized it more. And yeah. now that we're up and we're that we're about their age and shit, like we don't have any of that shit. So the fact that we don't have any of that and they just, that's all they had, yo, that connection right there make it crazy. Yeah. And with them bringing all of these shows back, it just make you over appreciate how black people was represented back in the 90s during that time. Bro, that, that is real. I, uh, shout out to the UPN network because I remember... Yo, oh, that was the black network. That was the black network, bro. bro. And that's what BET should be and we could have that conversation another day, I guess, because that's... Yo, That's it's gonna exactly be so, be, yo, be right. I'm just telling everybody who watches this, like, there are gonna be so many conversations intertwined into just talking about music because that's the way music goes, bro. Like, it, this I, came from first things first, rest in peace, Uncle Phil. That's how we got here. Thanks. But crazy, that's right? what music does it, it invokes conversation, it makes you think, uh, 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 it ties back to a time period, and it sometimes it ties back to a time period, but honestly, it's timeless because that line will forever live. Forever now. <laughs> no, that shit immortalized. <laughs> Immortal, yeah. That line's gonna live forever. Thanks. He's like, we'll feel yeah, so that's no role models. And yo, think 
about the title and think about what we're talking about. See yeah. how all like bro, this shit crazy, bro. It's all it's all connected, bro. Literally talking about the lack of representation like that we have, like our generation, as far as like black fathers and TV and black parenthood and shit like that. Like Whoa, no role models is the perfect song for us to connect to, bro. Like shit crazy, bro. That's re- yo. That's First the power of music right there, there bro. Yeah, like, bro. You really wouldn't even under- like of course no role models. I've heard the song. You hear what he's talking about in the song. He's he's I mean, if you if you was a naked listener with if you wasn't thinking, you would think he was speaking about women and uh un <laughs> and like an unfriend uh, unfriendly manner, but it's really deeper than that. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a lot deeper than that. And, and and I think that's the thing too, like him and Kendrick, and they do it their own way, which is why you you have to respect bo- both, and that's why I don't give into like the comparisons either either or, because one is it's always a matter of preference. It's always a matter of preference, and I think they are so in their individual bags, and they know how to do what they do like at the highest level, that it's so different. Like you don't have to do that comparison. So like. Where, where Kendrick will metaphor you and just like take you on this like lyrical assassination of an idea. Like J. Cole will do the same thing in a much different way. He'll just depict the story that sounds personal, but has like three other meanings that you just got to like, okay, like I see this side of it too. Yeah. Like, bro, you just got to give both of them their respect, bro. Like they both deserve their flowers now. And they don't, like, I, I, I don't think, because they're in the same generation, I feel like they don't have to, like, the comparisons are, like, okay, because that's just where where we are as people, like, have to compare, like, apples and oranges, but at the same time, like, yo. Man, they, they I, I watched them on ESPN yesterday compare, they asked, is Tom Brady, does Tom Brady have a better legacy than LeBron James? It's like, man, how? How are we supposed to know that? Like, come on. <laughs> that's literally comparing an apple to an orange, bro. You can't. No, that literally, that's literally that's, that's doing. wild. That's a wild question. <laughs> like now we now we comparing dudes in different sports. Like, okay. Like bad enough we gotta hear like the Jordan LeBron debate. I'm proud of that. But, I don't even want to hear that no more. I'm right. let them be great together. Facts. But, uh, just going going back. Uh, I think that no role models was kind of like an overall hanging theme for, I won't say a theme for the album, but it is something that he touched on a couple of times. Like I, I can remember in, uh, uh, I think it was January 28th, but he was like, what's the price for a black man life? I checked the toe tag, like not, not one, one zero on site. I turned the TV on, not, not one, one hero on site unless he dribble or he fiddle with mics. <laughs> that was different. Yo, I'm that was different. <laughs> He's different. Nah, for real. But yeah, like that's definitely a theme. That's one of the themes throughout the entire project. Yeah. Like that that lack of seeing somebody who like just doing good. Yeah. You know? and, and that's and real, bro. Like not only the lack of seeing that, but wanting to do good yourself. Like yeah. so how do I how am I supposed to do good in this world if I don't know what good is or if I don't have a representation of good? It's like also at the the representation is needed, but then it's like we also need the people there to to guide the youth right. to how to do it, that understand where we coming from. You feel me? Right. So like people that that came from where we came from that know the difficulties of the shit that we go through like on the daily. Right. So to reach back and help people up, that's that's really what what right. it should be more about. Thanks, I agree. I definitely agree. Yeah, yeah. This album is just like, yo, this this was the perfect album to start with, bro. Yeah, this is the perfect album to start with. After um, moving down the album, I think the next song is "Hello." Hello, yeah. That, like that was that was another one. Like that's that's another bro, one pressing the mood again because no role models is kind of deep, and then you come back in with "Hello" is kind of nice and light, airy, yeah. bring back that starry feeling. It's like. <laughs> Yo, he did that throughout. Like he'll hit you with something heavy. And yeah, like back. Like, and I feel like it's it's like that balance of life, you know. Yeah. It it'll be some heavy <laughs> shit, and then it'll be something that just like soothed you and shit like that. Like, and yeah, bro. To be honest, that that's another conversation to have. But to to go from a song like No Role Models is like so deep, 
And then to go into another song, it was like, yo, this is lit. Like, life is lit. But honestly, you're just taking the the lit situation in life and using the cope from the deep situation in life. Facts. It's a and lot not really deeper. dealing with either one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Which is a lot deeper pain than Facts. anybody. And then I guess his way of expressing this on the track, I, which is, I think is why uh, I'm so glad that uh, these people get to write music for us to hear because a lot of these people really got stories to tell and nobody to tell them to. You feel me? Like, right. and this is their way of expressing themselves. So. No, this shit is, it's crazy because it's therapy for both everybody, the, the, the artist and the listener. And I could go all day about how music is so therapeutic because Future is my favorite rapper. Yeah. But <laughs> that's a future we, we can go through that another day. <laughs> this is the, we gonna be, we gonna keep saying that, yo. We can we can. That's a whole nother episode. Following up, uh, no role models with hello. It's just like, all right, like I don't have like what I thought I didn't have. I think I'm getting now, but not necessarily. Like because like that song is just all dreamy. Like the fucking um, production on it just yeah. really you into this reality that might not be real. Just he's so sad. Um, and then we get the we get J. Cole and his little crew. And he like it be hit and miss sometimes. And I think when you like experience in life and you listen to it, that shit just hit a little bit better than like like because like you be wanting these rappers to just rap sometimes. And then they hit you with the croon and you just be like, eh, I don't know. But when you take it all in, it makes sense why, like, all right. Like this song is kind of different because it kind of gives us the insight to like J. Cole, like his lit life. Like, because that's not something that, like, because a lot of uh, artists are forward about the shit that they do. Right. And I'm talking about, you know, the drugs that they do and all of that stuff. And like, this might not seem like that type of song, but it is. Mm -hmm. um, and and like, you know what's crazy? I, I wonder if he battled the drug problem because I feel like that's an underlying theme. If it wasn't him, it was definitely somebody close to him that battled yeah. drug addiction. And that shit really fucked him up. Yeah. Because you'll hear that throughout his music as well. Like these references to drugs and these like double entendres that it could be drugs or just regular life, you know? I don't think nobody ever asked him that. But he said one of his, like in one interview, he was talking about social media being a drug too. So he like... Yeah, that, that play into what he'd be talking about too, like the shit that we see on social media and things like that. But that shows you that we have to, like we as people, as individuals, uh, have a lot that we have to actually deal with, actually cope with. And until we actually do that, like that's the first step. Like they tell you like when you're an addict, the first step is admitting you have a problem. And you have so many people like just in denial about their own reality, like their literal reality. Uh, and social media, the way it impacts us today, like it's just out of control now. Like it's way more accessible than when we was younger and things like that. And it's just like, I don't have to live my life. <laughs> like I can live whatever life I want to live on social media. That part, that, that's basically what I was trying to get at. It's like, I get, you know, wanting to live your life and putting yourself on social media, painting yourself in a good light. Cool. That's one thing, but just live your life. Don't, don't don't go up there portraying that you're something that you're not. Because I don't, I don't get why people do that. Like, what's the? I thought yo, so it, it was just, just to help us talk. Yo, easy. we live in the now, and this is like the perfect word now that is popping and shit. Cap, this is like cap. Like yeah. that's just where we are. It's so much easier to put the cap on than fucking. Rock out with whatever you got on, bro. It's the internet age, man. Everything is, cause, cause everything is just so believable from a picture. So all it takes is a picture, bro. Picture, meme, a video, picture, video, quick video. Yeah. That's that's just where we live, and it's crazy. And like, yo, and it, again, it just connects back to the music because you have all of these themes that are intertwined. So it's like this album goes in so many directions. <laughs> like outside of like, just like the narration of one person's life. Because if you listen to the album from top to bottom, you hear the narration of somebody's life. But when you start to break in, like, all right, is it drugs? Like these things are going on in the drug culture. Is it social media? 
these things are affecting us in social media culture. Like the shit just crazy, bro. Like even in music though, like the same thing. We got what the we got eleven songs on this album or thirteen. The thirteen songs on this album is just what not- he decided to give us. Like word. every That's verse, word. every every chorus, every hook is just the words that he decided to show us. Like word. this may not even be who he is. <laughs> Nah, but crazy. that's just the way I mean that's not what I meant this may not even be who he is but like it's, it's all about perspective the way you relate to music the way you uh, when you develop in like when you hear it and you uh, nigga yeah, I can't wait till you get the fucking sound thing it's so simple it's just a so it's such a simple word to say Yo, that, that'd be the worst thing when you trip yourself up over, like, the small world. Like, the smallest. Anyway, but when you hear the music and the way you react to it, like, when you take it in, basically, is what I was trying to say, like, um, and, and react to it, that's kind of your perspective of it. You just got... And then all these perspectives bring us to different conversations because the music is just diverse. Like, everything on this album is diverse music. Like, he went from tracks about the first time he had sex to talking to his homie that was in the streets and then we went to those stories so it's all different man it's all in, in the streets like yeah. uh, two cities being in the yeah, street, being in the street oh, doing right. that stuff word realizing that like, shit, maybe that shit could help you sometimes uh, manifesting your dream and then realizing your dream ain't really what you thought it was and like what you <laughs> thought you was chasing and money women and all of that shit yeah it's not even worth it nah. to be honest. like and that's where we get to the like, the end of the album, the last two songs, apparently, and fucking love your love yours is oh my god, man. That's like the lesson, bro. That's the lesson. I'm gonna keep my comments to myself, but there's somebody that I know very dearly that need to just listen to this song every day they wake up. Yo, just learn the message, bro. Like, no such thing as a life that's better than yours. No, no such thing. thing. Bro, no such thing. There's always gonna be a house that's bigger than the one you got. Always gonna be better, looking, that's shit, better than the one you rock. Blood, <laughs> always gonna be money. a bitch that's bad out there on the tours, but you ain't never gonna be happy till you love yours, bro. And it, and yo, that's just crazy. Man. Cause even to play on love yours, like love like those that's around you and like, like just love, love your life, you. love yeah, love the you. stuff that you possess, the stuff like, that you yeah. have, the stuff that you worked for. The and stuff it, that you are able to do, like yo, the things like yo, we are the most advanced species out here, and all of the things that we have really don't make sense when we can live such simple lives. And that's not to say like we all don't struggle with like finding the value in the things that we do because that that makes us human. That's our experience, but it's so much simple shit that happens every day that we don't uh, that we take for granted. That when you just take like five seconds out of your day to just be like damn yo i do have life right now <laughs> like yo that's crazy like yo niggas about to be like like me and like most of my friends like i turned 25 at the end of the year but this is like year 25 like niggas just enjoy 24 like yeah when you when you break shit down to that simple like just life knowing where knowing where niggas from like yo 25 niggas yeah. make it to c18 bro niggas be dark yo. up 16 Barely seeing 21. Bro, I got homies that died at nine. I know my neighbor died when she was 14. Like, so making it this far is really, it's really a blessing. And yeah. just, even beyond that, like, the things even that, like doing the shit that we doing now, like, where even something as simple as having somebody to talk to, having an outlet, right. uh, having somebody that believe in the same things that you believe in, that you feel me? Like, it, it, it really is crazy. It's and it's so much shit to be grateful for. And to to close the album like that, and obviously we got like note to self, and it's like a little song, but yeah. to really like close the album with love yours, that that's like the stamp on the entire album right there. Yeah, like, that that's just, like we yeah, and, exactly. Bro, it's not too many complete albums like that, bro. 2014 Forest Hills Drive is a complete album, and yeah. I don't like you can't stamp that on a lot and obviously it went platinum and j cole's just that big mm-hmm. and, and at that point like it was like all right he solidified but i think having a song like love yours at the end solidified that album for 
everyone who listened. That album is that that is definitely the perfect way to cap off the that because this album was really like his coming of age and it just ironically came at a time where we was like becoming adults. So. <laughs> That's the crazy part. Like yo, it. And like, yo, just being back in that space, 2014, 2015, like, yeah, like, I should have been more happy with like, love and mind, like, <laughs> and I was getting to that point, you know, where, where you just like, like, yo, like, things ain't everything that I wanted to be, but it ain't bad as I'm making it out to be, like, and that's, that's the crazy part too, right, yo. Yes, man, I'll be trying, I, like, it's crazy because being like uh, being socioeconomically in the lowest class, we we understand that this like we all right. So I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with wanting things because everybody wants things. Obviously, you should want a better life for yourself, for your kids, for your family, for your loved ones, right? We all want that. Right. But not saying we should be appreciative of bare minimum, but there are people that don't have bare minimum. So like, like even. The fact that we all got houses and fucking cell phones and I got a car, mm -hmm. I can go where I want, wherever, whenever I want. Like people don't want, people don't even have simple things like that. So Facts. I think everybody should be really much more appreciative of the things that we do have, the things that we can control. Because mm -hmm. that's another big thing that I'm starting to notice that people people get mad over things that they can't control. Yo, <laughs> uh, yo, and it, it it seems like such an easy thing to say like you know just focus on the things you control there's a lot of things that we absolutely have no control over no power over so to pour the energy of the things that you can control and it's mostly pleased. mostly what you can control is everything about yourself you know how you get up your attitude you know like the effort that you put in the work that you put in like do those things if you do those things really well and those things are hard trying to do in themselves. Like, so to tack on that extra task of worrying about what what's happening outside and things like that, like, nah, like. See, but in, in the age of social media, unfortunately, the, the, the purpose of life doesn't become worrying about the things that we can't control. It becomes worrying about how it, how it looks. Yeah to other people. Yeah, that's true. So <laughs> that's kind of what people try to control now. People try to control what people perceive them as, like their image, instead of just being pure and doing what they want to do. And which, like, yo, what, doing what you want to do don't necessarily have to be the right thing. Because I don't, I, I don't blame nobody for being who they want to be in no way. And I mean... People can tell you if you're right or wrong, but that's just going to be what it is. Like, people, that's just a thing. always that's tell it. you what they think is right or wrong. Yeah, what they, exactly. And, you know, exactly. and obviously there's a universal law. Right. There's universal things that are intact where you just know right and wrong. But right. at the end of the day, that shit is so subjective, bro. What's wrong to you is definitely not wrong to me and what's right to me could be like the illest craziest thing to you like right realize when when people realize that life is about perspective and stop trying to cheat perspective because <laughs> nice. i guess what happens is all right people realize that life is about perspective but that doesn't mean paint yourself in a way that people see you because then it's like that's all you that's all you'll ever be what you paint right. yourself about. i have no control over the way people see me I have everything. You literally cannot control that. So, the way I see myself is all that I care about. And I swear to God, like, like as long as I feel like, like I'm doing my thing, like I'm content with that. Even if it's like bare minimum with somebody else, if I'm like, you know what? I know what I'm going through. I put myself in certain positions like where I feel like I can be great. And if I fall short, I'm hard on myself. If, if I think I'm doing successful, it don't matter what you think. Is it like like that perception, that perspective that the world decides to you know give us is not on us, you know. But what what is on us is our perspective of the world that we're trying to create, like the world. And it goes back to the album, like loving yours, like that world that you 
that you really want that your heart desires that's what you that's what you that's what you focus on because yeah. all that other shit that shit won't matter 20 years later <laughs> love yours love yours uh, love yours <laughs> yeah. in the album with that that shit was crazy and it just it just summed every it put everything into perspective and yo that's 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 my favorite j cole album um okay. i his favorite project all time is like um what is that friday night lights that's that's his personal favorite that's my personal favorite oh that's your that's my personal favorite. friday night lights i think um that mixtape was ill bro yeah like yo again we could we like yo, it's gonna be so many episodes, so much to break down. We pretty much gonna break down like new shit, but everything to do with J. Cole, probably everything to do with future, everything to do with fucking Kendrick, and like yeah, everything to do with Jay-Z too, because Jay-Z like bro, trust me. Goal. We can go there. I, I'm I'm uh, that's a hill that I'm willing to die on as well, bro. Jay Z really like Yo. This, of course, this generation, they don't got respect for nobody. Yo. But this generation really don't got no respect for Jay-Z. I don't get it. Nah, it, it's crazy. And I say I seen some shit on Twitter the other day that just rubbed me the wrong way. Like, yo, Jay-Z got fucking songs, bro. Like, records where he just... Yo, we got to save that for another day. Bro. Days and years, bro. You yeah. definitely right about it. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yo, we don't know what we're going to call this. <laughs> We still working on the name, but that's all good. The name, the name, we gonna save that for another episode too, since we saving everything else for another. Yo, we episode. we can we can name it that, yo. Yeah, we, <laughs> I'm, since it's we it's saying this so much, episode. I think that's what it's really coming to at this point. Like, <laughs> save that for another episode. Save that for another. Episode. Yo, when I when I when I uplo- when I upload it after you chop it up, I'm gonna put that as the title. Save that for another. I, I like that. I got yeah. Fuck with that. Nah, but. You know, it's, it's it's been real. This this probably long, but it's yeah, been- this is pretty long for our first one. But you know, we we can get a little better at it. Like I said, oh, so you want to rate the album? Ten out of ten. Oh, All right. Ten. Out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> that should a ten. That shit perfect platinum. Bro. We should do. All right, we should do uh mics though. We should do five mics now instead of ten. Like instead of numbers, we should do five mics. So five mics. We'll give this album five mics. Just five mics, bro. Oh, five are you? Are you gonna do like the little um thing on the screen? Uh, I'm not. I don't know what you're talking about. I put like five mics on the screen. Yeah, I'm. A, yeah, I was just thinking about that. Doing oh like God, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. All right, so yeah, five mics. This is a five mic album. The nigga Nipsey told us how to get it, bro. Net. Far from a dummy, y'all need me the money, nigga. Ain't no hold None. Acting all crazy, I'ma whip it out and blow Let it go. Come holler at me when you really got a bag. A bag. Disrespect the family, your big token, catch a tag. tag. Ain't nobody better bring them out, bring them on. Yeah, I'm cool as a fan, black leather like the farm. Yeah. Man, I'm going back to Wakanda. I am. Heir to the king, legacy like LeBron. Yeah. Yeah.